This video is a first introduction to series. A series is an infinite sum. In this video, I'm going to be colorless, and I'm going to assume that infinite sums are well defined and behave well, and that I can manipulate them the same way I manipulate finite sums. In doing so, I'm going to get various contradictions. The moral will be that we have to define infinite sums carefully and rigorously before we can do anything with them, and that we cannot take for granted that they will have the properties we would like them to have. For my first example, I'm going to look at this sum. x is a fixed real number, and I have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n, and I'm going to call the value of this sum s. So what does this sum mean? First, when n equals 0, I get 1. When n equals 1, I get x, and I add it. When n equals 2, I get x squared, and so on. And when I write going to infinity, it means I'm adding infinitely many terms. The sum keeps on going forever. The trick I'm going to use to compute this sum is to take the whole expression and I'm going to multiply it times x. And here's what happens when I do that. 1 times x is x. x times x is x squared. x squared times x is x cubed. And so on. And now, looking at both lines, the tails of the sums are the same. All the terms I'm getting in the second line are exactly the terms I'm getting in the first line, except for the 1. So if I subtract both lines, all the terms will cancel, except for the 1. And I'm going to do exactly what? I'm going to take s in the first line, minus xx in the second line, and I'm going to get 1, and all the other terms cancel. Next, I can take now common factor 1 minus x here, and send it to the other side dividing, and I end up concluding that s is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. But be careful, I cannot divide by 0, so for this to be true, I need to assume that x is not 1. Right. So I got a value for this infinite sum that is worth for any value of x except 1. Well, let's test that. For example, I can take this same sum and evaluate it when x equals 2. Let's see what happens. When x equals 2, on the one hand, I have an expression for the sum, so the sum is going to be 1 over 1 minus 2, and that's simply minus 1. But on the other hand, when x equals 2, what I am adding is 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared, which is 4, plus 8, plus 16, and so on. And this looks wrong. This is wrong. Um, there's no way this sum is a finite number. This should be infinity. But in particular, I'm certain this sum cannot be a negative number, cannot be minus 1. So this is wrong. The error comes from assuming that every infinite sum is going to make sense, it's going to have the value of a number, and that I can manipulate those sums the same way I manipulate finite sums. The properties I've used here are properties of finite sums, but I don't know if they're true for infinite sums. I don't even know what an infinite sum means yet. As a second example, I'm going to look at this series, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n. And I'm going to call the value of this series Let's write down the first few terms for it. I start at n equals 0, minus 1 to the 0 is 1, plus minus 1 to the 1 is minus 1, plus minus 1 to the 2 is 1, and then minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, and keeps on going forever. There is one tempting way to group these terms, and I can put together this 1 together with minus 1, plus and group the 1 with the minus 1, and group the 1 with the minus 1, because they're going to cancel nicely. So it looks like this is 0, plus 0, plus 0, and yeah, this full sum is going to be 0, because all the positive cancel with all the negatives. However, there is another alternative way to group the terms. I could also do this. I can write 1 plus minus 1 plus 1 plus minus 1 plus 1 plus minus 1 plus 1, it's just the same terms, and I group them differently, I put parentheses in different terms. So the first one is left alone, and then I have minus 1 plus 1, which is 0, plus minus 1 plus 1, which is 0, and so on. And if I do it this way, instead of 0, I end up getting 1. So it appears that I have proven that this sum is equal to 0 on the one hand, and is also equal to 1. So 0 equals 1, that is obviously wrong. What I did here is not okay. Once again, the error comes from assuming that any expression for an infinite sum is going to make sense, and in particular, that I can manipulate it the same way I manipulate finite sums. What I did here with parentheses is using associativity, which is certainly true for finite sums, but perhaps it isn't for infinite sums? 
how do we work with infinite sums and avoid the problems I have run into in this video? The first thing we need to do is figure out what it means to add up infinitely many numbers. We know what it means to add up two numbers, or three, or ten, or a hundred, but not what it means to add up infinitely many numbers. So the first thing we need is a definition. We need to define what an infinite sum is. A series is just another term for an infinite sum. So that once we have a definition, if we are ever in doubt, we can go to it. And once we have the definition, we will realize that some infinite sum, some series, equal to a number and others not. We're going to call a series convergent when it equals a number, when it represents a number. But there are many infinite sums, many series that do not represent a number, and it's best to just leave them alone. If we try to force it, if we pretend they are a number, then we get contradictions, like I did in this video. And finally, once we know that certain infinite sums are well-defined and represent a number, we still have to figure out which properties of finite sums carry over to infinite sums. For example, finite sums are commutative and associative, but perhaps infinite sums are not. But if we have a definition, we can use it to try to prove whether these properties carry over or not. And then, with the definition and with properties that we have proven as theorems, we can now do work with infinite sums and we will never run into contradictions again. That's our plan. We need to begin by providing a definition of infinite sums, and I will do that in the next video.